Thanks for joining in today's webinar. A um, couple things to keep in mind. Uh, we found that Chrome browser uses or works the best. So if you're experiencing any problems, you may want to switch over to that. Um, the, the chat box on the side there is, is private. Uh, it will only be seen by myself and uh, my friend Jack, who's being the moderator today. Um, so if you have any questions as we're going through, uh, feel free to put them in there and then we'll, we'll adjust them all at the end. Um, so at, at the end, we'll have a little question and answer session and anything that we don't get to, uh, at the end of the presentation, um, I can I can email after. I don't want to take too much uh, too much of everyone's time today, so we'll try and keep that short, and then I'll deal with the other ones in time. Uh, we're going to be recording the webinar today, and it will be available for replay after we're finished today. Um, so I think everyone will be getting a copy uh, in in their inbox, and then also we're going to upload it onto the website. So um, if, if anyone's looking to check it out again later or something they want to revisit, uh, it should be available in a couple different formats. So with that, I think we'll get started. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Jeremy Burrell. I'm the, the owner and the lead craftsman here at Fiddlehead Casting Company. Um, I've been a Red Seal cabinet maker since uh, 2011. Um, started working in the woodworking field in about 2007 and did a lot of uh, playing around in the workshop before that. So it's something I've been at for a while. Uh, Fiddlehead, Casting, Fiddlehead Casting Company was born about five years ago um, with based on a, a mainly a story from a relative's father that had died. And, and their, their family was at the funeral home trying to find a, a casket that was a good fit for how this man lived his life. And they just weren't finding anything there. Um, he was a, uh, Kind of a natural living kind of guy so these the ornate um kind of the the traditional hardwood caskets just didn't really fit so um they, they were retelling the story to me after the fact and that got me thinking well geez maybe there's something that's missing uh, that's not available for people that want a simpler option so uh, in 2016 i launched the fiddlehead casket company um we did a bunch of uh, prototypes, different iterations, uh, playing around with dimensions and things. Um, but something that came about when I was looking into the funeral industry was this idea of uh, green burials or natural burials. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, the, the fiddlehead casket was built with that in mind. So there's no metal uh, in the casket all, at all. And kind of taking the, the old saying of, well, just bury me in a pine box. Um, you know, maybe that means a pine box, but to me that means uh, something that's a simple and natural option. So made a prototype and like I said, was learning about green burial. Um, so the, the prototype you see here on the screen, um, so there's, there's no metal, there's some wooden pegs. Uh, actually the interior is also filled. Uh, it's got the natural cotton mattress and a pillow in there. And it is filled with the wood shavings that are produced from milling out the lumber in the shop. And I took that around to a lot of funeral homes around New Brunswick, where we're based here, and even uh, a few in Nova Scotia. So although there was a lot of polite uh, comments, oh, that looks very nice and that kind of thing, um, overall, they were unreceptive uh, to the idea of offering that as, as an option in their showrooms. Um, and partly to do with, you know, existing contracts with other manufacturers and they didn't seem to be seeing a demand for a, a local product or a more natural product. And, and this was not really in agreement with the reception that I was getting when I told uh, just the general public about the idea. Uh, a lot of people said, well, this is, this is a great idea and why don't we do more of this kind of thing? Um, just a, a simple natural option. Why are we burying all these steel caskets and things in the ground? So um, that was a, a thing that needed to be rectified. So uh, with, with that in mind, I decided to begin selling directly to the customers. Um, and uh, as, as opposed to trying to be a supplier through the funeral home. One example is this one you can see here. 
uh, which was recently used for uh, the oldest member of my extended family who passed away a few weeks ago. Um, and, and he had had in his papers very clearly stated that he wanted a very modest casket. Um, so this, you know, without knowing anything about Fiddlehead Casket Company, because he had written his papers, you know, 10 years ago or so, um, th this is what something like what he would want. So uh, to be able to do that for him was, was quite nice. So, and it, and it just shows that um, there, there are, as, as much as the funeral home maybe doesn't think that people are looking for this kind of option, then, then they are. And this was another, uh, a man that, that went to our church um, and the same kind of thing. He, he had wanted something that was uh, simple and natural. And one unique thing about these caskets having flat tops uh, as opposed to a traditional rounded top casket is it, it provides a bit of a display uh, for different things that were in, important to the people that have passed away. So it's an unexpected bonus, but it really leads to a nice display. But then there was a problem of uh, getting interest from people that were outside of New Brunswick, farther away than I could just make one and drive it to them in my van. Um, and getting inquiries from other provinces, down into the States. Um, but the problem is that traditional caskets are large and they're heavy. Uh, two things that mean very expensive to ship. So uh, taking a cue from, you know, Ikea and some of the other uh, manufacturers that are shipping flat pack furniture, I thought, well, geez, maybe there's, maybe a flat pack thing uh, would work for people. You know, it, it takes up less space on the truck. Uh, it's not so heavy. They can be shipped by regular couriers and then people will assemble it on the other end. So again, uh, back to iterations and prototyping and designs uh, and, uh, and the casket kit that you see there was launched in early 2018. So the goal of having a smaller package and lighter was achieved. You can see the stack on the left is how it all breaks down uh, when it's in the box. Um, but still keeping consistent with the fiddlehead values of being simple and natural. There's still no metal components. Uh, it's just wood and, and glue and that's all. So keep, keep all the extra things out of the ground. Uh, top of mind when designing the casket kit was that it had to be very simple to assemble for someone with no experience or even their own woodworking tools. Uh, so the, the Fiddlehead Casket Kit has everything that you need in the box. Um, there's, the, there's a mallet that's included, which is a white rubber headed mallet, important because it doesn't leave any marks if you happen to miss uh, when pounding in the dowels. Um, and there's, uh, there's a detailed instruction book with photos and, and I'm always uh, available if someone ever, has ever gotten stuck, but so far, uh, it's been all good. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes to assemble, which I've heard from customer feedback that it's, it's pretty accurate. Uh, I can do it in about 10, 10 minutes. Uh, I've also done it a few times, so that's been a bit of an advantage there. Um, some of the other caskets, casket kits that I've seen online tend to have a lot more involved assembly that someone like myself with some woodworking experience and tools you know, I'd be able to handle it no problem. But um, to me, it was very important that whoever has, is going to be assembling, because I don't know who will assemble it, um, it needs to be so simple that someone who's never built anything can put it together. And I think we've done that. So like, as I mentioned, everything you need uh, is in the box. There's the, the pine panels, there's the rubber mallet, there's a, a package of dowels. Uh, the, the cherry pins that you see in the photo there. Um, so you need about 38, I believe, to put the kit together. Um, I usually put in 45 or so because inevitably one's going to fall on the floor and get lost somewhere. So if you're putting one together and one goes missing, don't worry about it. There's, there's extras there. 
And then, uh, as I also mentioned, the instructions are, are there and they're, they seem to be pretty clear because I haven't really had anyone that's had problems uh, with the assembly. So to date, um, we've shipped around 80 of these guys all over the US. We've got about 32 states, I believe, um, provinces and territories all over the place, coast to coast. Uh, to date, the record is uh, one that went to Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory. Um, and that's, that's awfully far from here. You see the blue arrow on the map there. That's, that's where we're based on the east coast of Canada in New Brunswick. So now that I've told you a little bit about uh, the casket kit and, and how it came to be over the years, I thought I'd share a few stories um, that I've heard back from families. Uh, and I always ask their permission to share these stories. And, and it's most of the time they've been quite happy to, to let me share the stories. Um, lots of times I don't hear anything from the families and you know that's to be expected. But every once in a while I might get a short thank you uh, things work well, or sometimes, like these next few stories, there's a few more details. So this one he here was uh, for a cattle rancher from Saskatchewan. Uh, and I was told that his sons came together to assemble the casket kit when it was needed. And you can see there, right below the handle, there's uh, the casket that was branded with the iron for the ranch that he ran so the same iron they would have used to uh, to identify the livestock out in the field um, and one one thing the uh, his wife sent along was that the unit sat in our home until it was needed our sons put it together in a matter of minutes and it was stressless to handle look at and use it suited my husband well This next uh, piece of artwork was uh, for a man whose wife was a, a Wollastoquaic woman um, from the area here, indigenous woman. And he had it painted like this uh, to honor his wife. There was a couple of local indigenous artists that came together to paint the beautiful designs there representing the, the river that runs through the city here. Um, we call it the St. John and the traditional name is the, the Wollastook River. So there's some, some waves and, and fish and different things there uh, sig signifying the woman, or the, the river. And again, it was a, a team effort to put this together. There's a couple of community members came together to build uh, the casket before the artists uh, got a chance to do their painting and it turned out beautifully. This casket was hand painted by a woman for her wife, uh, along with the help of her end of life doula. Um, she told me that it was the healing process of building it and, and decorating it helped her find acceptance uh, in the fact that her wife was in her last, I think last few hours at that point when they decided to put it together. Um, something that she told me was that it gave us power and control I had time to begin the adjustment and not sit on my hands, a loving task that took all of my attention and focus. Uh, there's more info on this, uh, this particular casket and the story behind it. You can find it on the website. Uh, CBC did a story about it and also uh, a podcast episode. Um, so maybe have some, some links to that information if you're looking to, to find out a little more of the backstory because it's quite amazing. Um, a lot of people, especially, excuse me, younger people said, well, I love this idea about uh, a natural, simple casket, but what can we do with it in the meantime? I'm in my 30s and hopefully don't need it for 40, 50, 60 years. So if there's something else we could do with this kit uh, to be useful in the meantime. Um, and a few ideas were thrown around uh, tables and benches and those kinds of things. But the one that made the most sense was using it as a bookshelf. So just uh, as the rest of the kit goes together, um, the shelves are installed with some more 
wooden pegs are a little bit smaller for the shelves. Use the same mallet and the shelves go in. Um, when the casket's needed as a casket, the shelves come out and then you're back to square one. Um, and again, this is something that I've seen online a little bit, uh, some other casket bookshelf kind of ideas. Um, and some of them to make the conversion from uh, the shelf to a coffin or casket, depending on the design, uh, it's quite involved. There's, you know, gluing, sub-assemblies, cutting, screwing, adding, bracing blocks, just, it's a lot. So to me, again, we need to keep it simple and make sure anyone on the other end can do it. So this is now, because of uh, customers asking for it, uh, this is now a standard option on the casket kit website. There's another one that uh, that a customer sent to me. So if, if you notice, a lot of times these tend to be a space for items that are special to the person. Uh, not usually going to be just a catch-all like some spaces in our homes tend to be, but this is a more intentional decorating a lot of times. These are certain special things that they're putting in this special place. So at, at Fiddlehead, uh, we recognize and respect that many people choose to be cremated instead of buried. Um, so we have a variety of urns available on our main webpage, the fiddleheadcaskets.com webpage. Um, and you can get there. The, the, the kit itself is specifically the casketkit.com website, but they're, they're one and the same, really. Um, but these, these are just a lot of times starting points for design uh, conversations. Um, sometimes we'll use special wood, uh, maybe cut from a family wood lot. I've done some carving on a few, engraving. Um, so there's there's a lot a lot of options for customization there, but uh, these these kind of get the the conversation started. And recently, I had uh, a unique request for this urn here, which is a double urn. Um, so. The, the man that called me talking about this, his mother had recently died and his father had passed away a few years ago. And it was the mother's wishes that her ashes be buried alongside of the father's. So we, you know, had a conversation again and came up with this design. And, uh, you know, the, they'll be able to be buried together as, as per the wishes. So if I leave you with one thing that you want to take away from today is you have options. Um, it's your choice what is happening uh, with with your body or uh, people in your family when, when they're making their end of life decisions. So if there's not something uh, that you're seeing that is what you're after, maybe at the funeral home, then look around. There, there's other options available. You can you can get in touch and we'll figure something out for you. Uh, so that's, we're coming to the end here. Thank you very much uh, for, for watching today. Um, if you have any questions at another time, feel free to get in touch. My email is there. Um, always love to hear questions and comments and I've had many interesting uh, email conversations with people. And uh, with that, we're going to stop the recording for today and move on to the questions.